Hey everyone, welcome back to another Free Roaming Friends video. Every week we either take you someplace that we are traveling or we sit down and talk about something travel related. A lot of the times our videos do have to do with Disney and that is what we're going to be talking about today. Specifically, adulting at Disney. Yeah, I said it. We get questions all the time. We have people come up and they say, so why do you go to Disney so often? It's just for kids. And that is 100% not the case. Sometimes we feel like we could even argue that Disney is just as much or sometimes even more so for adults than it is just for kids. If you've seen any of our videos before, you know that we don't have kids. So this is really the only way we know how to do it. But if you are a parent and you have kids, there are plenty of things we're going to talk about today that will be great for you and your family and some things that you can do with some modifications. So here are some things that you can do as an adult at Disney World. One thing that a lot of folks like to do is drink around the world. And you can do this at Epcot. At the World Showcase they have all these different countries. Each of these countries has their own drink specials that are unique or inspired by the country that they're from. So if you're in Germany you could get some great German beer that is imported or if you are in Japan you can try sake. One of the things people like to do during normal times is take their drinks around the world and visit the shops there's a lot of cool things in each of the shops that are unique to countries. We especially love Mizukoshi in Japan, and the Karamokucha in Germany. There's so many great things to do. Epcot's also famous for some of the best restaurants in the parks. A lot of times we will park hop from whatever park we're in that day to Epcot just for dinner. Um, it's a little more difficult now and menu items are limited at this time, but we do look for that to be expanding as things get better in our hopefully near future. Epcot has always been considered the most adult park out of all four of them at Disney World. And I know personally when I went to Disney as a child, I didn't appreciate Epcot the way I do now. I didn't appreciate it until I was an adult. So let's stay in Epcot for our next one and talk about the Epcot festivals. Most of the time, there is some sort of festival going on at Epcot, and there are a few big ones throughout the year. Right now, we're looking at the Festival of the Arts, and it's actually a very limited run festival this year. You have unique food and drinks from around the world, um, as well as a lot of art galleries come in and set up. Private artists, there's chalk, there's an awesome paint by numbers mural that they're working on and it's completely free you just go up and, and paint the numbers there's a lot of specialty artwork a lot of specialty cuisines and everything is kind of inspired by performing arts and visual arts so that's really awesome around March maybe end of February I can't remember exactly when we start our flower and garden festival at Epcot this is like the festival of the springtime so lots of flowers wonderful topiaries that get put out and of course specialty cuisine so in addition to all of the regular restaurants that you have in Epcot you have all of these food carts that you can go to and they change seasonally to offer different things that you can get look on your my Disney experience app to see what those specialty items really are food and wine festival is exactly what it sounds like lots of wonderful food and uh, specialty wines from around the world are featured in World Showcase. And the Food and Wine Festival is one of my favorites just because there's so many different more adventurous food items. Also really popular at Epcot is the Festival of the Holidays and this includes again specialty food, specialty entertainment, and one of the best draws is the candlelight processional and that is a choir that Disney operates and they bring in a guest artist, a guest MC, usually someone, a big name person like Neil Patrick Harris has done several in the past and it's really awesome and you also get the experience uh, local high school choirs and uh, students come in and help with the candlelight processional as well. It's a beautiful beautiful processional and a beautiful show if you ever get to experience it. Again, completely free after the cost of admission, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so the Epcot festivals are awesome ways to experience the World Showcase. Um, there are times that we've done these festivals and forgot that Future World existed. So, 
And there are, if you have children, there are things that they can do at these festivals as well. They have scavenger hunts, they have all kinds of little things, extra little things that your little ones can do. Um, we just included this because obviously the specialty food, the specialty drinks, great thing for an adult trip. For this next one, if you're traveling with an additional adult in your party, this is something you could do. You could do a date night and send the kiddos off with that additional adult and go and maybe have some more fun at Epcot, eat at one of the restaurants that might not be as kid friendly, check out the food carts, check out one of the festivals more than you were able to maybe earlier in the day. At one time, Disney did offer childcare services. I believe that will probably be coming back, but not sure. Right now, I don't think it's operating, but be sure to check before you go down. This was where, um, you could take your kids to a specific location for a couple hours and Disney cast members would actually watch your children and of course do fun things with them while you had some time alone. We should also mention that if you drove or if you have a car, there are amazing places to eat in the Orlando area as well. If you want a date night that's off property, find some of these local places that are kind of hidden. Something else that a lot of adults really enjoy is Disney Springs. This is the shopping and dining district at Disney World and it has so many restaurants, so many wonderful restaurants, so much shopping, so many specialty shops as well as World of Disney. They also have live entertainment at a lot of their locations like Raglan Road is a very popular place for live entertainment and they also have the Cirque du Soleil show drawn to life which was supposed to open in 2020 but obviously that couldn't happen and we just heard that it is going to open soon we don't know exactly when yet but soon World of Disney, it's the largest Disney store on property and it's split up really well. They have everything you want from Pixar to Mickey and Minnie things to housewares um, as well as the co-op. There are a lot of places to shop there. There are plenty of kid friendly things to do, plenty of family activities, but there are some places like the Edison that turn into an adults only place after a certain time and they have like the Edison's great. We yeah, need to, get, we so need to go fun. there. We need to go there late at night. We do. It turns into like a speakeasy. Yeah. So the dining is really where it's at. Um, the ganachery for dessert, Ghirardelli for dessert, and now Gideon's Bakehouse with their massive cookies. And oh, we so have excited. we haven't we have never tried Gideon's. We're gonna try the next time we go down. A lot of adults, if you have enough days planned on your trip a lot of adults just spend one entire day at Disney Springs because there is so much to do there and it really is a great place to escape from the parks the next thing we really enjoy doing as adults is resort hopping or just spending a full day at your resort when we went to Disney in January of 2020 we made it a point to go to one different resort than what we were staying at each day and that's this is another cool thing about Disney you're able to visit during normal times you're able to visit any other resort other than the one you're staying at so if you're staying at a value resort and you want to check out what the Grand Floridian looks like you can hop on over and go check it out the reason you'd want to do that is because each are themed differently if you look at the Grand Floridian you're looking at old Florida, you look at the Polynesian Resort, it's a Polynesian theme, Caribbean Beach, I mean they're all themed differently and there are different things in their gift shops as well. It, it's fun to, we actually ended up um, at Animal Kingdom Lodge on the balcony and sitting in a chair out there and I think we both fell asleep, I know I fell asleep for, it was raining really hard, we took a nap, and so we took a nap on, at a resort that wasn't the one we were staying at in a public area <laughs> I don't know it's not for everybody I no <laughs> Disney resorts also have fantastic dining options so if you are staying at say Caribbean Beach and you really want to eat at Topolino's Terrace which is at the Riviera you can do that and you can even do that now you can make a reservation at a different resort 
and you can go there and eat and then check the resort out. You can also do what's called pool hopping. During normal times, you can use the pool at a different resort from where you're staying. This is such a cool thing, in my opinion, because not everybody can afford to stay at the Grand Floridian <laughs> or the Riviera. I mean, you know, come on. Right now, you can only resort hop if you have a dining reservation at that other resort that you're going to and there is no pool hopping. As I said, along with resort hopping, you can also just choose to spend one whole day at your resort. A lot of people do this just to relax. Disney World is very overwhelming and there's a lot to do and you can get tired out pretty fast. So a resort day is a good way to kind of recharge and there are so many things to do at all of the resorts. There are so many activities at each resort that are so different from, from each other. All you have to do is go to the front desk and ask and they will be happy to help you and point you in the right direction. Something else that is not really our thing, but it could be yours, so they're on our list, is a spa day. There are several spas throughout, the, throughout properties at Disney World. Some of them may or may not be operational right now. That's something you need to look into before you go. Again, they're not our thing. But um, there are several where you can get all kinds of um, spa-related things. <laughs> I don't know. Like they have La Vida Health Club. At Coronado Springs. The Census Spa has locations at the Grand Floridian and Saratoga Springs Resort. And then there's also the Z Zahanati. It's the Zahanati Spa at Animal Kingdom. Lodge. The Zahanati Animal <laughs> Kingdom Lodge. We don't know spas. <laughs> we had to read a list. These are some of the most notable spas at Disney World. Another thing that we're not very good at, I'm not very good at, and you haven't done, um, is golfing. Disney has some excellent golf courses from what we're told. Golf courses like the Magnolia, the Palms, there's also the Oak Trail Golf Course and the Lake Buena Vista Golf Course. All of these are excellent and people go just to golf at Disney. If golf is your thing, check them out. If golf is not your thing and you still wanna say you're a golfer, you can do mini golf. They have several mini golf locations on Disney World property. And those are what I frequent. <laughs> if you haven't really been to Disney World or you don't know a whole lot about it, you might think that all of the rides are kid rides, little kid rides. That is 100% not the case. There are some very intense rides and let us know below if you think we should make some videos about our most intense rides at Disney. But something you can do is ride some of those more intense rides. Some of the rides do prohibit small children from riding. Things like Expedition Everest is a roller coaster in Animal Kingdom. The Rock and Roller Coaster has an inversion in it. It's the only one on Disney property to have an inversion. And most of the rides, while Disney centered, obviously, they're not strictly made for little kids. Basically, as an adult, you're able to ride whatever you want and you don't have to worry about your little ones being afraid, being you know, too short to ride or too small. And Disney does offer the rider swap program. So um, if you do have a child, you can each ride the ride while um, the other parent watches the child. And they have a really great system of doing that. So when you get to the front of the line, you'll just do the rider swap. One thing we love to do as adults at Disney is close down the parks. What this means is... Do the dishes. No. Sweep. No. Mop. No, 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 false, false. Restock all the shelves. Nay, nay, no. What I mean by close down the parks is you can actually, when the park is about to close, kind of find a spot, maybe grab a snack, sit down and just kind of watch people leave. This is a fun thing to do 
if you're willing to just kind of sit there and just hang out for maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Disney doesn't rush its guests out of the park. They do it very gently. <laughs> but you're able to just sit there and kind of relax. There's not going to be a cast member running up to you saying, okay, it's time to leave. When everybody's making that mass exodus for the Disney buses or whatever transportation, it's kind of nice to just sit back and relax. For us, we typically do our, you know, that's when we record our end of day video summary if we're doing a vlog that day. Um, and we just kind of reflect on what we did that day. It's a nice relaxing way to enjoy the parks. This is also a great time for you to experience the parks with a lot less people. If you're willing to sit and kind of hang out for a longer period of time, you can get some really cool pictures of the castle, Spaceship Earth. It's just a nice thing to do. Some really great things Disney offers are different specialty tours, um, backstage tours, different after hours events. For instance, at Epcot, we have a behind the seats tour, and that is through the Living with the Land Pavilion, where they're growing a lot of food that is actually eaten by us and other consumers on Disney property at Epcot. So that's the cheap one if you want a more expensive tour and you have a whole day to spend. Do the backstage magic tour at Epcot. It's a seven hour journey and you get to experience all kinds of things and about how the magic is made. There is the aqua tour at the seas with Nemo and friends that allows you to snorkel. You get to snorkel in the aquarium. How cool is that? With sharks. With sharks. I would never do it. I don't know if there's sharks. I don't know. Yes, have, there are sharks in there. Well, I know, but... Do you get to swim with the sharks? Yes, it said in the description, you get to swim with the sharks. Yeah. You're gonna swim with the sharks? No, I'm oh. not. But it'd be cool for another adult that it wants might be to. Cool. Yeah, it'd be cool if it's something you wanna do. <laughs> and you can let us know how that goes. Yeah. In Animal Kingdom, the Caring for Giants tour allows you to see how they care for the elephants. One of the most popular tours is at Magic Kingdom and it's called the Keys to the Kingdom Tour. This is a five hour tour that takes you all over the Magic Kingdom. It even takes you below the Magic Kingdom. Into the Utilidors. Which is the underground city, basically, that operates underneath the Magic Kingdom. This is a really cool tour if you want to learn the history of Magic Kingdom and Walt Disney and Disney World. There are other tours too available um, throughout all of the parks. All of these can be found on the Disney website and it lists prices and what you'll see and everything you need to know. Some of the after hours things that you were able to do were Villains Night. They would have special after hours events for Disney Vacation Club members. Things like Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party and Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. Um, have been available in the past. We look for those to return as well as things get better. The after hours events are really, really fun. This is a time when the parks are open in the summer, sometimes into the wee hours of the morning. And this is a great time to ride rides, don't have very long wait times. And it's- Specialty merchandise. There's specialty merchandise, food. It is a totally different way to experience the parks late at night when there aren't quite as many people there. The bottom line is Disney is a place for anyone and everyone. Walt Disney's dream was for his parks to be for everybody, both young and old, and they have certainly lived up to that. Disney parks are always evolving, always adding new things um, and taking away some as well. Looking at you, Stitch. Aww. If you're thinking of taking an adults only trip to Disney, fear not. There are plenty of things for you to do, even probably some other things that we don't have on this list. If there's something we didn't cover for adults on our list, let us know in the comments. We can definitely make another video of this. There are so many things that we can do. And part of the reason we have this YouTube channel is not only for us to look back and, and see our own memories, but to hopefully establish a little bit of a community where we can share ideas and uh, we can share what we know and you can share what you know as well and we can all help each other have the best time on our Disney trips as possible. Thanks for watching everybody. See you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
Sorry, I had something else I was going to say and then it just left me. Okay. You got one sentence. Yeah. <laughs> Epcot's on a 1.2 mile circle around or circular shape. I didn't do so well in geometry. <laughs> oh, Disney. What made this Disney thing? You get to experience all kinds of things in, about how the magic is made at Epcot's park. At the Epcot. The Ep at Epcot. You get to experience Epcot magically and watch the magic at Epcot.